Hey, hey, it's Meg here. So this is the last clip for the uh, the uh, the Suron overclocking uh, heatsink vlog. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it. Um, so let's start from the beginning. So so the BSC 2000. I never really rode it in like really warm weather before until like now because I got it around like Christmas time and uh, that's about how much time I've been spending with this controller, you know. And I noticed it runs a lot warmer than the Suron one. Um, and uh, and yeah, so so like I overheated it a bunch of times going up hill climbs and stuff, and then and then after I got the NXC display, I started overheating it a whole lot because we were pushing more power through it, and and yeah, so I, I knew we need to have heat sink to so we so we could have uh, maintain that performance because um, it, what's happening is I'm getting thermal cutback, and thermal cutback is when uh, when it gets too hot, it limits the power so it doesn't overheat. Um, and, and then you just lose a whole lot of power and and you'll notice that you'll notice that when when you watch that uphill climb on Sierra Road um, I'm just wide open throttle and I'm not getting any more power you know going up the hill um, that's because the controller is overheating um, that's the problem so um, I'm pretty sure it's the controller and not the motor and not not the battery so because <laughs> that controller is always smoking hot smoking hot and it just like and the more you ride it, the worse it gets, you know, and then you got to let it take a break or else you're going to not have any power, you know. And uh, to get up some of those hill climbs, you got to have power, dude. You know? So, uh, in my honest opinion, the BAC 2000 is not really, it's not really a good controller for the uh, Suron Light B. I think it's just, uh, it's just too small for it. Uh, I think if I was to do it again, I would get the BAC 4000. Um, the BAC 2000... Like, if you were going to ride the Suron really, um, really tame, you know, not very fast, and just, you know, ride it kind of casually, then it's okay. But if you're going to really push it, you know, and race it, and, um, you know, really get on it, it's, it, it'll overheat a lot, the BAC 2000. I don't have any experience with the BAC 4000 or 8000, so I can't really comment on that, but, but they're bigger, they're designed to handle more power. So I'd imagine they're probably not going to overheat as much as a BAC 2000. The BAC 2000 overheats a lot, man. It uh, it runs so much hotter than the Suron controller. Okay, the the Suron controller, it's got you know it's not as powerful. It wasn't designed to be have have a lot of power, but they really overbuilt that thing, man. It it I've punished that controller and it's never let me down. This one has let me down on a couple occasions already, because of the heat on account of the heat. But like hey, you, when it's hot out, you get you know, it's like you can't control the weather, you know, <laughs> type of thing. So, so that's why I decided let's build a heat sink for the BAC 2000. Um, and uh, so the first thing we did was uh, I tried to look for uh, the first. The first design was to just put a flat plate on the uh, flat aluminum plate on the, uh, the the heat sink that's already on the BAC 2000, the main heat sink. I'm, I'm going to be calling the the BAC 2000 heat sink the main heat sink, okay? And then, uh, and so I was thinking of putting an, a flat aluminum plate and then bolting it on to the top of the heat sink and then putting one a tiny little heat sink on the other side. It's very similar to the design that I came up with for this. One. Um, the, now, what happened was I couldn't find a flat aluminum plate. They don't sell them, dude. They sell like uh, aluminum diamond plating, but they don't sell like a sheet, like a one eighth thick sheet of uh, aluminum. I can't believe it. I, maybe I'm looking in the wrong place, but uh, I went to Lowe's and I went to Home Depot. They didn't have it, so I couldn't find any kind of substitute for it. Um, I could find like really thin sheet metal and stuff, but that's that's all I could find. You know, I'm not I'm looking for like something thicker, you know, stiffer. So lo and behold, I Hayes Omega had a box full of heat sinks. Okay, uh, where I got them from, I I don't even remember, but I think uh, I think I. Uh, Hayes and May used to go to those computer surplus stores and they would sell all this surplus electronic stuff. 
and and they probably had like a box full of heat sinks and I said hey you know what I might be able to use those heat sinks for some kind of project in the future so and look and then and then like fast forward today and here we are we're using it so uh, this is the biggest heat sink I had in that collection of heat sinks okay I was thinking of just using a small one uh, well I was thinking of using the plate and then putting one of the smaller ones on the back you know just to, just to add a heat sink underneath it um, that heat sink is not very good on the BAC 2000 because it doesn't have any fins on it man the, um, so if you guys don't know how heat sink works is it adds more surface area that's the way it works uh, the fins add surface area to the, the heat sink the plate you know so it allows it to dissipate and also it lets you know it allows convection to suck the heat out you know more more easily it's it's more effective than like a, just a just a big flat plate of aluminum, you know. Um, so it, it allows it it gives it more surface area. The more the more surface area you have, the more you know the more there's more place for the for the heat to go. Okay. So and it also you know if you were to just stick a a big chunk of aluminum on this, it would be very heavy. So this the, it it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of like that, uh, it's called fluting is what it's called, okay? Like, um, if you guys know anything about firearms, like rifle barrels and stuff, they have something called a fluted barrel. And the fluted barrel is basically, they take like a bull barrel, it's called, the bull barrel is like just a big, solid, thick barrel, you know? That, that, that's kind of like, it's kind of like just sticking a big, flat piece of uh, uh, aluminum there with no fins on it. So, and then, and then what they do is they cut, um, they cut what they call fluting in it, sorta, of, and it's kind of it kind of acts like a heat sink, and, and it adds more surface area to the barrel, but it also lightens it at the same time. So that's kind of the same idea with the heat sink. Um, you're you're adding more surface area, but you're not adding like a whole lot of weight to it, you know. And and we can't we don't really want to add like that much weight. Plus, it would be expensive too. So <laughs> that's another thing. Uh, honestly, the best thing to do would just be to get like a big plate of uh, copper. And just like stick it on in that sucker, man, because copper's uh, conductivity is a lot better. Why don't we use copper heat sinks? Well, it's because copper corrodes. <laughs> co co I, I wouldn't use it on something like this. Maybe like a CPU or something, uh, like a computer CPU. So this is what our Hades Omega knows this stuff from working on computers. I, I used to build PC computers all the time. And uh, now I, I kind of don't do it as much. So Hades Omega is kind of a dinosaur <laughs> when it comes to building PCs now. Um, but yeah, so the idea was to get a flat plate and then just add a, a some a heat sink fins on the back of it, uh, bolt some bolt some heat sink fins. But I couldn't find the plate, so I wound up using this. Uh, so the first thing we did was we put the um, the light bead on my trailer and I compressed the fork. So the the problem is the controller is in the front of the frame, and right behind the wheel and stuff. So um, you have something that moves here that's called a fork. <laughs> the fork the um, the the wheel, the fork, and the and the fender move. Okay. Well, the fork moves, and then the fender and the and the wheel moves with it. So, so what I had to do was uh, so normally, the stock Soron comes with a 19-inch wheel, and that's what I used to ride in a dirt. So, so for the very least clearance, um, we have to make sure that the wheel doesn't interfere with the uh, the shock. So, because when you hit a bump, and like let's say if you bottomed out the fork, you don't want you don't want the wheel to hit the controller or hit the heat sink. It, it'll damage it, you know. So, so we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So, to 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 make sure that didn't happen, we put it on my trailer and I strapped it down to the chalk and I compressed the suspension as far, almost as far as we can go. Um, and then uh, and then we found out, hey, there's plenty of space. There's plenty of space under here that the the wheel doesn't touch. So even at full compression, it's not going to touch. So it'll be safe. The only, another reason we don't want it too long is because there might be like a rock or something underneath that we ride over and the heat sink might hit it and it'll, it'll bust it off, you know, you don't, you don't want that. So, so we can't have it too long either. Uh, but lo and behold, when we put the 19 inch wheel on there with the knob, even with the knobbies, so the knobbies make it a little bit taller, um, it, it still didn't uh, contact the heat sink. There, I could still stick my finger in it when we made the heat sink, so that's good. But I found out, yeah, there's a lot of room there. Um, the only the only clearance issue is the fender. The fender touches the uh, the controller at uh, full thing. So, um, so the first thing we had to do was to weld some mounting tabs onto this big heatsink. Um, that's the first thing we did. I 
I use a product called Aluma Weld, so it lets you braze aluminum. Um, you gotta heat the two metals up. I, I apparently heated it too much and it melted the heat sink. You can see on, on, if you look at the other side of the heat sink, it's, it's one of the fins kind of melted because <laughs> I got it so hot. It was supposed to be like 600, 700 degrees or something, you know, and I was waiting, 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 you know. I don't think you have to get the aluminum that hot. I think you can maybe get it around like 500 and then just start heating up the rod because then it'll start sticking. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, I, I let it get too hot and it, it, it also warped the heat sink too. I think it warped the heat sink. I didn't check to see if it was flat before we, we heated it up. <laughs> so, so I think I might have warped it a little bit, but that's why we have the heat sink compound on there. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that was the first step. We have to braise the tabs on there. So we got some, uh, some aluminum, uh, flat, flat, flat bar. That's what they call it. And we cut it and then we braised it onto the side of the tabs. The reason we have to do that is because the BSC 2000 has these kind of wings on the side here that protrude from the controller. Why they're there, I don't know, but hey, it's a good thing to bolt something onto, right? So, so, uh, so, but the problem is the heat sink is just, sh just a teeny tiny bit shorter than the, than the wings. So we got like no contact with the wings at all. So there's nowhere to bolt it onto. My idea was to drill a hole in these wings here and then, and then bolt the heat sink onto them. Like, like this design right here. Okay. Um, and it looks like we use way too much because it sticks out a whole lot. If these become an issue later, I might grind them down. Um, we don't really need them, but I said, hey, you know, it's, it works as an extra heat sink, you know. Um, so, so I aluma welded the top part, and I was like, man, I don't want to heat this thing up again. It might warp even more. So, uh, so what I did is I JB welded the bottom parts. But, but those, are, those, those, uh, those bounding brackets are on there. They're on there really good. Uh, what could Hades Omega have done to make it, make it better, that, that process? Use a TIG welder. Um, I think a TIG welder will, you don't have to get it quite as hot. You use an arc to, to melt the, uh, the rod and stuff. You would use, I, I think you would use a little, you, you might be able to use a luma weld rod for, for arc welding. I'm not sure. It is Meg is not an expert at arc, um, arc welding or TIG welding, so, um, yeah, so I shouldn't hate, shouldn't hate Omega should take some classes. <laughs> but that equipment is expensive and I don't think I would use it very often, so, but, uh, Welding aluminum always mystifies me. <laughs> so, it's whoa, that's cool. Okay, uh, okay. So so we got the tabs on there, and we can we can actually bolt it on. So that was the first step. Um, and then and then and then when Hades made so so uh, so yeah, we I had to take the controller off to uh, to weld the to to drill the holes in the controller because like I didn't want to, it's kind of hard if you do it on the bike so. That's what I did. I took the controller off again. I un unbolted everything, and then uh, I hate taking the controller out because if I if I take it out and put it back, it may I may mess something up. You know, but I didn't mess anything up by the way. <laughs> and then, then I found out the the bracket, the bracket that uh, you get from ERT that bolts the the controller onto the bike is was cracking already. Um, I was like, it was cracking in like three different places, and I was like, well, you know, I could fix it with glue, because. Uh, uh, what glue, what what plastic cement does is it, m it pretty much melts the the plastic together, you know, and that's what you want. You're welding it together, but um, I was like, ah, you know what? Why don't we just make our own bracket? So that's what I did. I made my own bracket. I used this aluminum angle, um, angle ba angle bar stuff, and then a bar stock, and then uh, I made my own bracket um, using the uh, the ERT bracket as a template. So it's much thinner now. It's a little bit heavier. But also another good thing, benefit was that is that it sucked the controller into the frame a little bit more. The ERT control, the ERT bracket, it kind of pushes the uh, the controller out a bit, you know. And the only thing is there's less room for the wires and stuff back there. But it but it was fine when I when I bolted it on. So also there's this part sticking out here, but it, I think it looks cool. I, I I left it, you know. I I didn't make it flush with the controller. So so one thing, it's going to be stronger. It's closer to the to the to the frame and it kind of does act like a heat sink because it's aluminum you know it's aluminum and it's actually bolted onto the heat sink the heat sink uh, there's uh, some screws and it and it bolts onto the heat sink so um yeah so i'm pretty proud of that too <laughs> so 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 while i was at it i made that bracket so and, and it, it would actually give me more, give us more clearance for defender uh but unfortunately not enough so um 
But the next thing we had to do was chop the heat sink, okay? So once we got this, this big heat sink uh, bolted on um, with the mounting tabs and everything, we had to make sure it's not too long. So basically, it was past the scoop here, so we didn't want it to touch the scoop at all. So, uh, hey, some, I, I would actually, if I was to do this again, I would actually make it longer, but we didn't have enough material. Uh, we kind of ran out of material, so... So basically what I did was I um, I took the whatever distance there was from the controller to like wherever it was hanging off and I cut it in half. And then and then I I we cut the heatsink off and then I mounted it to the back of the the primary heatsink. So now we have two heatsinks. You have uh, it so the re the reason for that is I wanted to make use of all this space underneath the BAC2000 controller. The BAC2000 is a pretty small controller. It's less than half the size of the stock Suron controller, okay? <laughs> um, so, so that, so that's my reasoning for like having that under there. Now, unfortunately, um, there ha there was a lot of fitting issues with that. Um, I had to cut off half of one of the fins on the very outside because it, it's almost touching the, the the it's touching the nut that that the BSC the BSC two thousand is bolted onto. So I cut that off, and also there's a screw that's protruding from the bottom of the bracket on the ear, for the ERT bracket it's protruding into the the heat sink so I, I ground a little I cut a little like a little dome into the fin so it doesn't touch so it is everything is like on oh, there really good man really tight clearances it's it's a work of art he's mega says he says he crafted this heat sink I crafted it. I didn't just just build it I crafted it <laughs> okay and it, you can definitely tell I crafted it because it looks kind of ghetto. <laughs> it's it's a very DIY looking. Okay, so we bolted that secondary heatsink onto the primary heatsink with six bolts, six six well six screws, um, the same kind of the same screws that we used to bolt these onto the, um, the controller. I used four for the main heatsink and then six for the secondary. And then what we had to do was uh, we had to cut some reliefs into the fins. Okay, so these are here. So you can see that some of these are like half the size of the other fins. Well, the reason they're like that is so because the fender hits the um, the heat sink at full compression. So, so to uh, to get around that is I I cut this at an angle so when it when it does hit the fin it slides it slides and goes up. It, it's kind of weird. The fender kind of like it goes back and it just goes straight up all of a sudden. I I don't know why you know it, I would imagine it should just travel the same path right but it kind of it kind of goes up and then it just goes back a little bit or something or no it goes back uh, and then it goes up right away so um, but yeah so I cut these out and then we we put it back on the trailer to make sure everything fit after that after we we kind of looked at it and then I started grinding and stuff and then and it was just pro this process of putting it back on the trailer and seeing if this touches that and then I got it to the point where like it just it just barely grazed it there's like a there's like a one millimeter gap before that happens you know uh, one thing I guess I could do is just uh, raise the fender a little bit I guess but or just take the fender off period but I, I kind of like having the fender on there it looks cooler <laughs> that's what I'd say so so yeah if I didn't have the fender I wouldn't have to have have cut the um, the heat sink up here okay uh, but yeah but it does look cool like that uh, I wound up leaving the the two outer fins fully intact so that's good um, and uh, and then that was it um, after all that cutting we, I I had to do a lot of cleaning and deburring and stuff because this working with aluminum it creates a lot of burrs and stuff when you're cutting it I I, I use the uh, a cutting wheel tool like a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, and some uh, cartridge grinding rolls, a lot of stuff like that. Um, I got my money's worth out of my die grinders for this project. <laughs> I was gonna say, okay. Um, so, and then in the end, so in the end, that's uh, that's what we got right there. Um, uh, so I attached a secondary heatsink, and we used this stuff, this uh, super lube silicone heatsink compound to help transfer the heat better. Um, just like metal to metal contact, you know, it's not very good. This this helps. Uh, I think it's called conduction. Um, you want it to conduct the heat. You want to transfer the heat away from something. And to do that, you can use something like a liquid or grease. Okay, and this is this uses zinc zinc oxide. And also, it it kind of the the heat sink is not flat. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I checked it with a with a straight edge, and it's actually bowing in the center. Um, 
which is not good because uh, because we're bolting bolting it from the outside, so so it's still probably bowing in the center. So so the heat sink grease helps fill in all those inconsistencies. We wound up putting the grease on there and everything. So the reason the reason we put the grease in there is because the the heat sink I use isn't totally flat. I think I, I I like I said I think I warped it when I when I put the aluminum weld on there. So Ace Omega is like a, a a beginner using the aluminum weld. But also I found that 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 a uh, brazing or yeah, brazing a, a heat sink is very difficult because the heat, it's a heat sink, you know, it soaks in all the heat, it, so it doesn't heat up fast enough, you know, and, it, and then just that one part gets hot and then, um, I mean, it's hard, it, it distributes the heat more evenly, so, so that was the problem with that, um, but, uh, but yeah, that's the reason why I, it's not flat, you know, that or like, you know, it's just not a very good heat sink, <laughs> and he's making didn't pay anything for it, I already had it with me, so, um, uh, yeah, so so we bolted the secondary heat sink on there. We used the six bolts, and we put the we slathered the grease on there. Um, it was pretty hard to clean off all the excess. Um, and then we put the the heat sink on there um, with the secondary heat sink. And then uh, we oh so we what we did is uh, we did a test. Uh, we uh, we rode it up Sierra Road um, without the heat sink. Okay, so the, we did two runs. We did one with the heat sink and one without the heat sink. I, I, I carried a backpack with me with the heat sink in it. And then what we did is uh, we rode up the, uh, the first time without the heat sink. And, and I, could, uh, I could feel by the time we get to the top of Sierra Road, um, it was, uh, it was, we were hitting thermal cutback. Um, we were hitting like 25 miles per hour on the, the last like, uphill section. It was like a, it's like a steep kind of fast uphill section and we could just goose it the whole time, you know, and we were only hitting 25 miles an hour on that section. Um, that's the one that Hades Omega remembers the most because we were going so slow, so slow, 25, 25 miles per hour going up that, that section. Um, so, and then we found out like, yeah, it's like the temps are like 145 or something degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty, pretty hot, <laughs> pretty hot. So we definitely overheated the controller on that run. Um, and the temperature, the ambient temperature was around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so it was pretty warm. Like, the heat sink was already, like, 90-something degrees when we started, so. Um, so we went down and, uh, let the bike cool off, and then, uh, we, I, in that time, when we got back to the bottom, we started from the same spot, and I, I connected, I installed the heat sink. Uh, we, we, we installed it dry, though. We didn't use any heat sink compound, so that's, so it's probably a little bit better now that we put the heat sink compound on there. Um, and we we rode it up, so so yeah, and then and that that was Hades Omega's little like, big experiment, I guess. It was a big experiment <laughs> um, to see how well that heat sink does um, compared to not having a heat sink, and it made a big difference. Okay, so we I rode it up with the heat sink, and I could def I could immediately tell like, hey, you know, I get I got more power, and I get got more power longer. Okay. Um, and we were climbing at speeds up to like 40 miles an hour, you know, a stock Soran would probably only do like 30 miles an hour. It might be able to do 35, but it'd be struggling, you know, but we were doing like 40 and it was like, it was, it was a little trooper. <laughs> and, uh, and by the time I get to that last section, the section that we hit 25 miles per hour because of thermal cutback, we were doing like 35, almost 40 miles an hour going up that, that last section. And I was like, wow, man, this, this thing made a big difference, big difference. So... Uh, that just goes to show, you know, the BSC 2000, it's just not very good at um, heat dissipation because it's so small. So, I think mega shit about the BSC 4000 because <laughs> it's got a bigger heat sink. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't really like the heat sink design on the BSC 2000. It's just a flat aluminum plate, man. Why? Who makes something like that? Add some fins to it or something, you know? Yeah, I, I feel that the BSC 2000 is inadequate controller for the, the Suron. But now it's a little bit better because we got our... Our, our overclocking heatsink on there because <laughs> we overclocked our, our BAC 2000 uh, controller. Well, I don't, not really, but we put a we put the most powerful battery we could on it. Um, so yeah, and then, then that, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then and then I took it home and uh, and then today I uh, I took we took the heatsink out and then I put we cleaned both uh, mounting surfaces and then uh, we slathered it with the heatsink compound grease and then I. I reinstalled it, and now it's it's never coming off again. So it's always going to be on there from now on. Okay. Um, the good thing is, I, if I do if I do get a wind up getting a BSC four thousand in the future, 
Um, Hades Omega really doesn't want to spend any more money on this bike. I feel like I'm just wasting my money on this bike. It's um, it's fun bike, but I don't know if we can race it, you know, um, because it overheats and stuff. So, um, and I can't get it running the way I want. So I'm 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 kind of disappointed in it right now. But at least we can fix the overheating issue by using this. So, um, so what's uh, some other things Hades Omega was thinking of doing? Oh yeah, what other things could Hades Omega have done to help to get the uh, the sewer on the cool to run cooler? We could have used water cooling. Okay, like I. So uh, I, I talked about this at the beginning of the project, but uh, water cooling would help, but you would have to have a water block, the part that actually attaches to the heatsink on the, on, the, on the BAC 2000 controller. You would need a water block, you would need water lines, you would need a water pump, you would need a radiator, you would need a reservoir, you would have to power the water pump, you know. And then you'd be car carrying liquid around, it would, be, it would make your bike more noisy and, you know, all that stuff. So um, I, I, I thought mm, liquid cooling doesn't seem like the way to go. And I was thinking of using like some liquid cooling components from like a CPU. Uh, like or not um, for, for like a desktop computer system, you know. Um, I used to have a water-cooled PC. And, uh, and it's, it is more maintenance, okay. So you have to make sure you top up the reservoir every once in a while. Um, and it's like where the hell are you going to put all that stuff here, you know. Like yeah, you could probably put a radiator underneath. Maybe you could stick a reservoir back there somewhere and a water pump. It, it would be really tight, you know, and then it would just there would just be more junk hanging off of your, your controller. And this is simple. You just block, bolt it on there and then that's it. Well, we did put a heat sink compound on there and then we bolted it. Uh, even if you used a, a water block, you would still use the heat sink compound on it. So um, I think water cooling probably would have been better, you know, but it, it, it just would have been more complex, you know, and um, this, this keeps it more simple. And it looks cool. <laughs> um, another thing uh, Hades Mega could have done is there's a um, there's a company that that fabricates a heatsink for the BSC controllers. I think it's BSC four thousand or eight thousand or something. But I'm pretty sure you could probably get it to fit on a BSC two thousand. And that was like a hundred twenty dollars. That's it's pretty expensive, but if you think about it, it actually bolts onto the BAC controller. Um, it's actually a mount for it that, that's custom made to fit the, the Suran. And, uh, and it's like it has a big heatsink plate on it, you know. And hopefully, you know, that, that might have worked too. Um, and Hades Omega is thinking, I probably should have gone that route. <laughs> yeah, because um, how much time did it take Hades Omega to make, to craft this? Okay, I'm going to say, I didn't make it, I crafted it. <laughs> Uh, it took me like four days, four, almost five days uh, working, you know, every day, like for like about five, six hours a day. So what was it four times five? It's like 20. I, 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 I think it took me like 24, about 24, 25 hours of work put into that heat sink. Did I spend any money? No, I didn't really spend any money. I had all everything already with me. You know, I had all the materials already. I had the Luma well, the, the angle aluminum, the aluminum bar, bar stock, the, the heat sink, I had all that already. I had all the screws, the nuts, and uh, the only thing I really bought was this, the, the heat sink compound. That's the only thing I bought. Um, I, like I said, I tried to buy a big flat uh, aluminum plate, but I couldn't, I couldn't find one. They, they don't sell them. <laughs> They're not easy to get. Um, so so I, I had this on hand, and I, and I, and I made something out of it. So. I, that's the biggest heat sink I got, you know, and, and it just sits in a box doing nothing all the time. So, so I used it. <laughs> all right. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty slick. It kind of looks, kind of reminds me of the Suron, the Suron uh, um, controller, sort of. It's got that aluminum look to it in the front. Uh, Would have been nice to use like a um, ana black anodized, but uh, maybe I can get this anodized in the future and get it anodized black or something, you know. Um, what could I do to improve this? Well, probably have have it resurface. Take out that um, it's kind of warped in the center, so it's warped on the edges too. Um, it when when I heated it up, it warped it on the edges. So um, to have it resurface, but I don't think you could resurface it enough to so it's so flat. There, you'll run out of material. <laughs> so so um, yeah, I, I would uh, if I was to do it again. If I wanted to do it better, um, I would take it to somebody that knew how to to TIG weld aluminum and then I would have them weld those tabs 
Or I would buy a bigger aluminum plate and then just cut cut it to the size, the perfect size already, so I didn't have to add these tabs. Um, I would have a, a, a heat sink that's slightly wider. Um, it just so happens this one just fits perfectly, except it's not wide enough to touch the uh, the wing. So that's that's that was a bummer right there, you know. And I wound up putting too much material anyway. So <laughs> there's really not much. There wasn't really wasn't much we had to add on there, you know. I put like twice as much as we really need. Um, yeah, so I could have probably gone with a slightly bigger heat sink and then cut it down to size. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I was thinking of actually putting a much smaller um, heat sink, like about half the size of the fin. So, uh, but I found that we had plenty of room. So, all right. So yeah, that so so that that's from the start to the finish. Okay, of uh, the the Suron overclocking project, overclocking heat sink project. Um, the start to the finish, and, and we're done. So uh, I may do a follow-up video in the future to let you know how the heatsink does, but you s just have to watch my videos to, let, to see how it does, you know. Um, I'd like to see how it does, you know, going dirt biking and stuff. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm happy that I didn't really spend any money on it, and uh, but it took a long time for me to make it. And it looks cool, and it actually works, because we verified that going up Sierra Road, so. We actually did an experiment so check that definitely check that video out the the hill climb experiment video um, I will do a side-by-side -side comparison video too uh, I don't I don't think I rode exactly the same pace every time but but it was pretty close and um, you can see both run side by side I'm gonna try to make a video like that okay all right well thanks for watching that's the end of the overclocking uh, heatsink project is me up uh, also, one thing I wanted to point out before I go is uh, one thing you could do if I if I was just trail riding this thing and it overheated, you know, um, one thing you could do to cool it down is carry one of these guys. Well, a smaller one. Carry a smaller one, like a little spray bottle. Um, kind of carry one that's like a, carry like a one. little spray bottle about the size of this. Basically, you know, the, the, have a spray nozzle on a bottle like this size, and then just take it with you. And then spray it on the heat sink when it when it gets hot, you know, and then uh, and then it'll help cool it a lot, cool it down a lot better. Um, is that that's what I'm planning to do <laughs> if I'm stuck on the trail? Because when I when I was on the side of the trail and the the controller overheated, I'm just I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting. There, there has to be something we can do to help it cool down. And I and I actually spit on the controller with water, you know. I, I got water from my camelback and, and I sucked it into my mouth and I spit on the controller. <laughs> I spit it out on the controller to cool it down, you know. And I was like, you know what, if we had just a spray bottle, this would be a lot easier. <laughs> so, so that, I mean, it kind of works like an intercool, it, like those intercooler sprayers you see on those turbocharged cars. They spray, they spray a mist of water onto the, the, um, the intercooler to, to help, uh, help cool the, the air charge down, you know. Uh, it's the same same idea. You spray water on the heat sink, it cools it down. You know, um, that's like a it's con conduction. Con it's it's like you're using a liquid to cool. Li a liquid transfers heat a lot better, you know, than than a solid. That's what I want to say. Or it's a gas, you know, the gas. <laughs> All right.